So along with my videos educating people about anarchism, I thought I would do a video talking about its polar opposite, fascism. Um, there's this quote that's been going around, particularly in certain liberal circles, which has got to be the most out-of-context quote I've ever seen. Uh, it's by Mussolini, where he says that fascism should rightly be called corporatism, as is the merger of corporate and government power. Now, that's a real quote, he did say that, but it doesn't but the word corporate doesn't mean what you think it means. Uh, he's not saying let's give government power over to the corporations, which is basically the, living, the reality we're living in now. Um, corporatism, as understood in that quote, basically refers to the association of people into guilds or corporate groups uh, based on national interests and social functions, so that labor, business, agriculture, military, etc. all have uh, their own corporate group that is represented at the national level um, and uh, united under the state. Um, in, fact, in fascist Italy, basically, you had uh, one labor corporation, basically a big labor union. It was it was the one fascist union and sort of stamped out any non-fascist unions. And then you had a, a business corporation or, or, or business union where all the capitalists were united under one union. And... Um, they were, and the idea was that the state would arbitrate and mediate between them in order to produce harmony between classes. Um, and, uh, they, and they were allowed to uh, you know, negotiate, make demands, so long as they uh, maintained their allegiance to the state. Uh, in fact, so this is basically a form of syndicalism, um, but albeit a very authoritarian kind as opposed to the anti authoritarian uh, anarcho syndicalism, which, in which uh, workers. Uh, produce work among themselves to uh, regulate production, but um, so fascism has basically a holistic view of the state. The state is not just uh, you know there as a necessary evil or uh, to keep the peace. It is seen as a source of unity and harmony among individuals and among classes. Um, and, uh, fascism says uh, says that the individual only has meaning within the state. That rights freedoms and stuff are given by the state or, or uh, the, the state is the thing that empowers an individual to claim freedom for themselves and so uh, and it, and it's sort of this expression of of conscience and universal will and that none of those things exist outside the state so uh, by that logic then opposition to the state is basically a negation of one's humanity and any um, and any traitor to the state is basically a traitor to humanity in, in this context. Um, so, uh, so the fascism advocates a kind of you know discipline and indoctrination, uh, based on the idea that the fa that the state is this kind of paternal uh, source of guidance to the individual. Um, fascism also opposes the uh, idea of, of class conflict and socialism, but that uh, but that doesn't mean that they're opposed to you know, anything in the interest of workers. Like, as I said, there, there, were fascist, there was a fascist union within Italy. Um, and so, you know, the idea was that all classes would be unified under the state and the state would ensure harmony between them. And this often meant doing things that would be very progressive. I mean, they, fasci fascism advocated, you know, strict regulation of the banks, uh, which, you know, and often, often nationalization of them. Um, and uh, you know, would, and advocated eight-hour workday and all kinds of progressive reforms. Yeah, you know, in order, yeah, you know, because it, it struck a very populist tone with the workers. But it was also backed by capitalists who understood that this was the the one way they would stay in power at a time when capitalism was 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 very weakened uh, by the, the excesses of of the free market. Um, so. Uh, so, so, cap so fascism was basically a response to the decadence of capitalism and offered as an alternative to revolutionary socialism and offered what it called a third position uh, in order to unify the nation state uh, and establish a kind of order in which, uh, in which uh, society would be unified. Um, as I said, there was also there was suppression of dissent involved in that in order to maintain that order. There was also populist tone with concessions to the workers. Uh, but also for the capitalists, uh, what it provided was a source of surplus value in the form of war. Uh, fascism 
essentially involved a warfare state. Um, and as I said in a previous video, when you have warfare, when you have ex you know expansion of the state, then um, the elites can afford to be more generous to the underclass because there are new uh, forms of surplus value coming in from the conquered territories. Um, and so the fascist state is basically a warfare state. And in the doctrine of fascism, which is uh, ghostwritten for Mussolini by a Hegelian philosopher named Giovanni Gentile, um, basically uh, talks about warfare as this kind of uh, spiritual expression of collective will. So, um, so in a sense, I mean, fascism, you know, like, like socialism often gets tagged with this label of collectivist. But nothing I've seen in Marx or, or, any, or any other um, a socialist thinker you know, comes near to the level of collectivism as expressed uh, by fascism, which, uh, which sees that the state as this kind of organic whole. You know, a, a lot of fascists refer to their ideology as integralism. Um, but, in, but anyway, like, what, what, I'm, what I'm getting at is that obviously I'm, I'm not the first person to say this could happen again. Uh, but what I want to emphasize is that it's not that we are living in a fascist state. Um, we, we are certainly living in an increasingly authoritarian form of capitalism, but uh, it is a capitalism that is very weighted towards, uh, the, towards the wealthy, towards the capitalists, in a way that is simply unsustainable for it. And fascism is one of the responses to this kind of uh, you know, to this kind of out of control capitalism, and um, as I've said, I think neoliberalism has stretched capitalism to its limits, and, cap and, it, and I think there's good reason to believe that capitalism, as we know it, is dying. Uh, and so we have to be very careful about about what ends up replacing capitalism. And, um, and, I, and I want to emphasize that fascism is something that that could very well be on the table if we don't offer some better alternative. And that's why I, uh, I advocate for anarchism. And that, that doesn't mean that every, that every possible uh, anarchist idea has to come true, but what I'm, what I'm basically advocating for is anti-authoritarian socialism. And if we get some anti-authoritarian socialist system, I want to make it more anti-authoritarian and more equal and more so, uh, so, so that we move in that direction, basically the exact opposite direction of fascism. So, uh, I guess I'll leave it there for now. Peace.